The next part of our story begins in 1528, here at Hever Castle. The doors are shut. They too are in quarantine. A sickness is spreading through the land, a sickness that, unlike many, is prone to targeting the wealthy rather than the poor. Killing people within a matter of hours, thousands are dying across the country from the sweating sickness, and within these walls, lying in bed, fighting for her life, was Henry VIII's beloved, Anne Boleyn. In fact, in 1528, the love for Anne was clearly already bubbling under the surface. What arrives at the gates of Hever Castle? But a love letter from the king himself. Very smooth, Henry. It would be a year later in 1529, when Henry would start the appeal for an annulment of his marriage with Catherine of Aragon. Why is this important, do you ask? Well. While Anne is being treated by her physicians that only the wealthy can afford, those poorer folk who have contracted the disease would have been turning to the help of the abbeys, the nunneries, and the monasteries who tended to the poor and the sickly. By the end of the following decade, Anne Boleyn would play a significant role in the dissolution of the monasteries. As a result, leaving the people of England without their earliest form of healthcare, what I like to call the MHS, the Monastic Health Service. The dissolution of the monasteries that began in 1536 and was all but complete by 1540 caused a seismic shift in society. But to truly understand why, we have to look at the roles that religious institutions like Delapri Abbey played in society. First and foremost, it was all about prayer, the connection with upstairs. In the medieval and Tudor world, prayer was a practical function. It was an essential service where the job of the monks, nuns and friars was to pray for the souls of the people. It was so integral in their lives that at the time of the dissolution, everyone in England would have lived within a 30 minute walk of a religious institution. Bells would have rung out at every calling to prayer. And there were a lot of those. But they offered other services too. Nunneries like Delapri were one of the only opportunities for female education outside of the nobility. They took in travellers, they took in those seeking sanctuary, they helped the poor and the sick before there were hospitals, and they were quite significant for local economies. I mean, Northampton's economy was devastated after the dissolution of Delapri. Today, we have our NHS. Class, age, race, religion, nationality, it doesn't matter. If you are sick, our NHS is there to help. At the time of the Tudors, the question of the poor wasn't even discussed. After the dissolution of the monasteries, a void was left in English society. The fate of those who relied on abbeys like Delapri for their welfare is largely undocumented. In 1536, Delapri's time as a nunnery began to draw to a close. Henry VIII introduced the first act of the dissolution of the monasteries. Now the aim was simple, to shut down all the small houses that were worth under 200 pounds, which included Delapri Abbey. Now Clementina Stock, the last abbess, she managed to pay the crown 266 pounds along with land and rent. Now for the time, this was an enormous sum of money. But this not only proved Delapri's value, but also enabled her to successfully save the abbey. Now where did they get all this money? I think the truth behind this mystery probably lies within the nature of the Cluniac Order. 
Through their focus on lavish architecture, rich vestments, sumptuous decoration and ceremony, Clementina was able to raise the money when the king came knocking. In 1537, Henry sent out royal commissioners to persuade the larger monasteries to hand over the keys. She was forced to sign a deed of surrender and the abbey was finally dissolved on the 16th of December, 1538. What does the NHS mean to you? Good question. Um, it's a blessing. It really is. I mean, I've got any praise for them. They were fantastic. I was in there for 14 days. Wow, the care I had was fantastic. Can't praise the NHS anymore. Brilliant. It's a huge safety net, and whether you're rich or poor, you're getting equal treatment. To the modern eye, the idea of monasteries being an integral aspect of society might seem a little far-fetched. However, imagine the NHS. If they just disbanded it today, there would be outrage. Riots on the streets would just be the beginning. It is that integral to our belief system. And also, where would we be in tackling COVID without it? Well, England saw a similar shift when the monasteries were completely dissolved in 1540. The people were furious. The impact of the dissolution of the monasteries would have been profound on the general public. People were seeing an attack on their church without consequences. These people, who were the spiritual leaders of their nation, were being driven out while God did nothing. The king's men were stealing from the church and were not being struck down. Their street cred was left in tatters. 